These are the same 144,000 Jewish males, 12,000 from each tribe, that were sealed in chapter 7. Now John reveals that this seal is the Lamb's name and his Father's name. Chapter 13 ended with the inhabitants of the earth forced to take the mark of the beast. This is near the middle of the tribulation, that is, the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Verse 14 of this chapter is the very end of the Great Tribulation. I believe that this entire chapter belongs together, making this near the Battle of Armageddon. Mount Zion is Jerusalem. It is only a small part of the Temple area and the City of David. There would be little room left for anyone else on Mount Zion. They are with Jesus Christ wherever he goes, before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. They had been redeemed from the earth. These comments make some conclude that the 144,000 are martyred, and that this entire scene is in heaven. They interpret Mount Zion in the sense of Hebrews 12:12 12, 12, as the heavenly Jerusalem. Others believe that Mount Zion is the temple area of Jerusalem here on earth, and that before the throne is the same as let us boldly approach the throne of grace. Hebrews 4:16. The throne of grace is clearly in heaven while we are in earth. I believe that this is the period of the cleansing of the temple from the abomination that causes desolation. It is after the seventh trumpet, but before Jesus Christ touches his feet to the Mount of Olives. I believe that this is the preparation for the return of God's presence in the temple, the returning Shekinah glory. This will be a tremendous struggle in both heaven and earth. This passage simply explains the purity of these men. Their purity is their power. God is holy and cannot dwell in the presence of sin. As the tribe of Levi was offered to God in place of the firstborn of all Israel, so these men are the first fruits from among men. They live in the presence of the resurrected Christ, who is their power. Only their sexual purity and their integrity are mentioned. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Proverbs 4.23 No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. Revelation 14.5 Immediately before the harvest of the earth, the war of Armageddon, three angels announced God's final message to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. This is near the end of the ministry of the two witnesses. The first angel flies in midair, the atmosphere. To everyone on earth, he proclaims the eternal gospel. God will hold every single individual on earth responsible for what he says. At this time, just before the sounding of the seventh trumpet, the beast will silence every other witness. The woman, Israel, is miraculously provided for in the desert. The 144,000 are with the Lamb. All others who refused to worship the beast have been martyred, so God provides his own witnesses. As in Galatians 1.8 and 1 Corinthians 15.1, the word for preach or proclaims is the noun and verb forms of the same Greek word as gospel. In Galatians, Paul proclaims damnation to anyone who proclaims a different gospel. 1 Corinthians 15 defines the gospel as the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. This seems to be a different gospel. At this time on earth, the beast and the false prophet are busy forcing everyone to battle against God in Armageddon in northern Israel. Instead of countering all the satanic deceit which drives men to worship and obey the beast, this angel simply proclaims Jesus Christ as creator, the only one who is to be worshipped. At this time, it is as simple a message as possible. Obeying this gospel will bring immediate martyrdom. The four things mentioned, the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water, are the sources of life. The message of the second angel, Fallen, Fallen is Babylon the Great, is used by cults all over the world. These cults apply the label Babylon to true Christianity. The message is clear. Babylon is the self-indulgent religion of the dragon. It is both spiritual and economic. Some are deceived by the dragon into believing that the dragon is God. Others are seduced by her sinful pleasures. It will encompass all other religions on earth during the Great Tribulation. Though the message of the first angel is difficult to reconcile with the message of the gospel that Paul preaches, the message of the third angel is even more difficult to accept. 
Everyone still alive except Israel, the 144,000, and the two witnesses have the mark of the beast. The message of the third angel seems to ta- say that everyone else on earth is damned already. Hebrews 10.26 says, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment in raging fire. My question is, why would this angel proclaim this message if everyone on earth is past hope? Perhaps the mark of the beast can be removed. The final message is a voice from heaven. This voice seems to be only for John. There is nothing which says that anyone else on earth hears it. It proclaims with certainty that others will die for the name of Jesus. It also proclaims a change in dispensations. The resurrected church becomes part of the armies of heaven. Those who die in Jesus from this point onward go to immediate rest. These verses show the end of the Great Tribulation, chapter 15 to the middle of 19, all describe events which take place before this final harvest of the earth. The Son of Man is a title of Jesus Christ both in Daniel 7.13 and throughout the Gospels, especially Mark. His crown is the victor's crown. Though he is ruler of all, he submits to his Father's will. These angels fulfill what Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24.36 that even the Son does not know the day or hour, only the Father in heaven knows. Blood is a liquid which dries rapidly. For blood to flow, rising as high as the horse's bridles for a distance of about 180 miles, it must be a swift destruction. This is outside the city. The entire length of Israel is about 180 miles. The valley of Armageddon to Jerusalem is only about 50 miles. 